Smash that limiter! So 37. It is episode 37, is it not? There we go. For some reason, the minus key didn't work. Ah! The minus key. Yeah, that's my hot key for my <laughs> um for my chat uh for my uh, Discord. The mute, the mute uh, one. Oh, episode thirty-seven. Hello, everyone. We'll try that again. I have a shell. That's you have a shell. Is. I have a shell. I do have a you shell. You have a shell. And Ray gets an Eminem storm tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Not you, not now. That's okay. Not now. No. No. Not tomorrow. No. Tomorrow. No. Tomorrow. Yeah, can't, do, can't do it now. Nah, it's impossible. So, how was your week anyway, Spliffy? The week thus far has actually been good. Satisfying, good. nothing crazy, uh, just a normal work week. How's your week been? My work's been, my work week's been pretty busy, uh, pretty full on. Got the uh, uh, work lunch on Friday, so I'm looking forward to that, going out to the pub with the mm. work colleagues for the old Christmas bash. Um uh yeah it's going pretty good um i also managed to have found a cheap canopy for my car today oh yeah right on yeah so um it's an arb canopy you know the five glass ones yeah um so my dad's picking it up for me tomorrow nice all organized and ready to go so um yeah it's like the only it doesn't look like it has any cracks or anything like that in it um, I got it for a pretty good price. I knocked him down a fair chunk because, um, he has no keys for the locks, but I, I know how to repin keys. So, <laughs> so I can just change the <laughs> locks out and, um, rekey them to myself. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, so I save a lot of money just by that, but it comes with roof racks and everything. Um, oh, so yeah. So the whole kit and caboodle, whole kit caboodle, um, the paint's not faded or anything. I'll need to do some uh, cleaning and whatnot because it's not like you know, it's not it's it's second hand. It's off of a um uh a Navara that had blown its entire motor and trans line. Um, mm. So yeah, so uh so yeah, and uh, my parents were uh, really really kind enough to say this is your thirtieth birthday present um, as nice. well. So they pitched in uh, as well with it, which is even better. So. Didn't cost me that much yeah. in the end, so it's really <laughs> good. So yeah, um, I also uh, got my scanner tool, uh, which came How in is this that week. Have you, have you been playing around with that? Tell uh, me I've, been, been, I've, been, I've it. been playing around with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday I hooked it up in my car and found thirteen different fault codes in my car and I zeroed oh. them all out. <laughs> um, this is normal. Uh, it's normal for modern cars to have a lot of fault codes. Because yeah. you think about it, it's a computer, right? So anytime your computer starts up, this is in real life too. Every time uh, your computer starts up, um, some things don't always work right and an error will come up. Yeah. And basically the differences with cars and computers is the computer will basically throw that in a junk box. Um, and as long as it doesn't keep happening... Um, it's not an issue where cars actually hold on to these fault codes and they will do things like go into limp mode or change the running of cars to avoid damage of the car. So it's actually really good um, common practice to clear fault codes when you do things like battery changes and things like that. Um, right. Because if you clear all the fault codes, it makes the car run a lot better um, because the car doesn't think and nothing wrong's going wrong. And also by doing so, you know, if a fault code keeps recurring, um, then there's obviously something wrong. So a fault code can happen by just simply the car starting up. It said, Hey, are you alive? And then it took a little while to respond back. Yeah, I'm alive back. And then a fault code will come up. Um, where if it's like, Hey, are you alive? Fault didn't hear back, fault code come up, then you delete it. And if it goes, hey, you're alive again, when you start up the car and run it again, and you still don't hear anything, there's something wrong with that sensor or something's going wrong. So that's how you diagnose modern cars, basically, is you use the fault codes to narrow down what's going on. So, uh, for example, my fault code that came up was the integrated AC 
audio interface system is what it was called, which is my um, basically my sat nav stereo system. Uh, yeah. Obviously, when I had unplugged the battery when I was doing the fuel filter, when I started up the car, it was throwing fault codes. So that had a fault code in it, which I had noticed that after I'd done that, I was having issues of my phone not Bluetoothing connect connectivity. Like in the mornings when I start up the car, it just wouldn't connect with the Bluetooth properly. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? And it was ever since I did the fuel filter change when I unplugged the battery. And um, now that I've cleared the fault codes, my Bluetooth's connecting without any issues. So obviously something was going on there. And I I also reset it as well, which did help. Um, Because that's the cool thing about this tool. I even got it here. Got it here. Um, The cool thing about it, this is what you call a bio-directional tool, which means that this tool can control certain functions on certain cars. Now, my car, it can't control a lot because of my old car. Um, big example is uh, the this has an auto VIN uh, function. So basically, you plug it in, it will automatically scan your car and find your VIN number and find out what your car is. Uh, my car's too old for that, so it doesn't work. So I have to manually do it, which is fine. But um, that's just what you have to do. Um, so I'll show you it. It's basically a tablet. That's basically what it is. That makes sense. Um, this is really, really hard doing. I'm like balancing on the edge of the table, making sure I don't drop it. Yeah, don't drop it because I don't imagine if you like, broke it, that'd be fucking awkward. I mean, it shouldn't. It would fall on carpet, but this is it here. So. Oh, that looks really cool, actually. Yeah, so it even has a camera and everything. And this is what really is handy. Camera for? Uh, f- for example, like. It's really handy for a scan tool to have a camera so you can take photos of uh, like serial numbers on parts and things like that. And then when oh, you're on here, sense. yeah, you can you can do things. You can do lots of different things. This is yeah. this stand is really handy. So what you do is when you have it plugged in, you have it sitting on top of your steering wheel so you can do everything on on here. Um, the one thing I wish it wish uh, it had which all scan tools have this issue is i wish i had a longer obd uh lead the lead's not that long um but other than that it's great it's fast it's um yeah it's not an issue and so basically we'll try and turn this off you'll have to keep tabs on that and tell us how it's going as yeah you keep using it well i want to hook it up to ray's car and have a look to see if i can delete um her airbag fault that'd oh. be really cool see all the reflections so is it just not uh does it keep not does it keep saying it's undeployable yeah basically yeah right or, or, or it, you can't see it <laughs> you can do it like oh. there there you oh. go you angle it down all right. con- contrast control oh there we go this is yeah so these are all the list all the different car um uh, model like uh, brands it can do so this yeah. is under the asian brand i think so you can see it can do it all um oh that's under or sorry so for example i mean obviously i can't show so i can do um volvos toyotas toyota in china Vauxhall, uh suzuki subaru soyong sprinters smart so smart cars skoda seat sab rover rolls royce uh renault samsung which i didn't even know renault samsung was a thing uh, Proton, Porsche, Polestar, don't know what the fuck that is, Opals, <laughs> what the hell, Nifiat, Niji Fiat, what the hell is that, I don't know, I Nissan, guess Fiat is just a short name, for Nissan it. GDR, Mitsubishi Mini, uh, Mercedes, Mazdas, Maserati, um, I can do Luskins, Lexus, Land Rover, Lancia, which is your favorite brand. You, you love the Lancia. Is it Lancia? Lancia is that is car my... that you um you loved on uh, Forza. Oh, it was too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that car so much. Yeah, uh, Lamborghini. Hey, that's new. That I couldn't do Lamborghini the other day. I guess I updated it. Uh, Kia, Yay. Jaguar, Jeep. Um, I can do Ferrari. I can do um, Holden, all Holdens. I can do that on this as well. 
Well, I guess that um, makes sense. Yeah, I can do lots of different things on on this one. Um, which is why I went for it, because, like, I'm an enthusiast sort of person, so I went for basically something that, um, that will allow me to utilize on all the different type of cars that I get exposed to through, through my days. Um, yeah, for sure. My brothers, my parents and whatnot. Um, cause my parents have like a Brett, a 2020 to, uh, Toyota Prado. And, yeah. um, you know, for example, like if the Toyota dealership says that, oh, oh, this is wrong with your car, I can verify whether they're telling the truth or not. <laughs> um, because this can do everything their thousands and thousands of dollar dealership level fucking scan tool can do. This can do it. Nice. I can, I have full, when it comes to Toyota Prado's or Lancruz, I have full unlock uh, capabilities with this thing. The only thing I can't do is key for programming, and that's because I purposely went for one that doesn't do that because I don't need to. Um, Fair enough. The amount of what times is key you... file profiling, what's that used for? So basically, what sets them different to the other scan tools is they communicate with basically a fob reader. And what a the fob, fob reader? Yeah. So what the fob reader does is it basically scans the fob and um, shows the codes that is on the fob. And it basically, <laughs> you can read it. it basically Ray, reads Ray was just saying he can't understand you when you're talking to the ground. Uh. <laughs> so, it's, the, gra the ground, Winston, the ground. The ground, Winston. You can't be looking, talking to the ground, Winston. Apologies, apologies. Okay, okay so basically... Winston. Basically, I'll um I'll bring it up. So a key fob scan tool, um, uh, key programming. So basically, it just has like a device that goes with it. Um, hey, Punky Wog, how are you? What's up, man? Oh, this is a good one here. This is this is a really common one. That um, a lot of people use a hella expensive though. Uh, yeah. Where is it? There it is. Where you no know work? Okay. Is it coming up? Still not coming up, is it? All right. I need to need to change preferences. Why are you not working? Well, it's not working. Why is it not working? You need to investigate. Okay, cool. Ah, so that is it. like a really expensive professional grade um, one. So yep. basically it has, so the scan tool, this Autel scan tool is exactly the same that um, my launch does. Like they do the yep. same thing. The difference is this has key fob program uh, ability into it. And um, these devices here is what, pretty much read and scan the different type of key fobs across all the different brands. Um, and they will read the code and then the code will be transmitted. Uh, to, this is usually the device that does it too, by the way. Um, it will then transmit it to the, the, the scanner itself. And then you got to go into the uh, ECU of the car and then actually reprogram the ECU to add or delete key fobs from the system and a lot of cars like commodore for example um will only allow to a maximum of two fobs programmed in the ecu at a time so then that way cloning is not possible and that's the reason why it's a security precaution because in old school key fobs like for example my car its key is actually a key fob and it will send a signal to the immobilizer to deactivate when i put it in but it's not a smart one, so you can just clone as many as you want. And as long as that code is on it, it will um, it will deactivate the immobilizer. However, smart, more modern key fobs, they have basically what they call a flowing... It's kind of like a flowing smart sort of serial number at the end where it changes. And it does that to um, tell the car that this is the genuine key. Um, otherwise, cause if it's a cloned one, it won't do that. And so it basically stops it from working. 
problem is if you do stuff like that, you can really fuck your car and actually completely like lock down your car so it won't even turn on. So you got to be real oh. careful when it comes to this sort of stuff. It's not like <laughs> rocket science. You just got to be patient and make sure you do the steps. That's all. Um, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so that's the difference between this level and my level. So my level, I can control uh, lots of different things. I can do actuated tests on different solar solenoids. I can activate and deactivate window wipers. See if the motor's working. I can control the central locking. I can control a lot of different compartments on the car, like the injectors. I can turn them off and on. So I can turn the car's injectors off, start the car to see what the compression's doing or something like that. I can uh, see my volt meters on um, the battery to see how much amperage my battery's um, retaining or being charged or et cetera, et cetera. I can test mm -hmm. resistance in different circuits in my, in, in, with this tool. So for example, a common fault with a lot of cars is the clock spring in the steering wheel will start to fail and the clock spring has got a ribbon wire that goes like in a big cow. And the reason why is because obviously your steering wheel rotates and basically when your clock spring starts to fail, you will get a resistance um, in the electricity in the, in the voltage, and it will it, sh it should be like a th at a three a level three, but um, if you have an issue, it'll be like fifteen ohms, oh. and um, that's usually a telltale sign that your uh, your um, fuck got a lentil bait. It's it's failing, and usually the co uh, the biggest um, uh, symptom of this is your airbag light turns on which i think is what's going on with ray's car i think that um that has failed in ray's car which is why the airbag light won't turn off so yeah so and it's pretty easy to fix either your clock spring is really easy to fix you just basically um disconnects your airbag so the center part of the airbag which is usually just three push springs at the back so you like disconnect your power and you just get two Phillips head screwdrivers at the back, pop them out, and then the whole um, airbag comes out. You disconnect the wire, obviously, from that, so it's safe. Um, mm. And then you just basically start taking apart your uh, steering column plastic shroud. And then um, once you do that, then you basically got the steering wheel. And then you pretty much line up the steering wheel in the center. Use your steering lock uh, to lock it at center. So... Make sure you use the um, the natural steering lock in cars to lock it in, and then you make a mark, and then you take the steering wheel off, and uh, then you basically just disconnect the um, the clock spring, which is sits at the back behind the um, steering wheel, and then just replace with a whole new one, and away you go. Hell um, yeah! Yeah, it's it's pretty simple, but uh, yeah, scan tools open up a lot of diagnostic possibilities um so that's why i got one and uh, every time i do a fill filter change it is a pain in the ass because um, <laughs> my car will play up now that i got the no. scan tool i can actually instead of having to do the sequence and the pedal dance i can literally go fuel pump reset relearn done done all good um ah, so nice. yeah i don't have to worry about uh, fucking around anymore so yeah, and uh, Punky Rog's car, I can uh, I can uh, do that to your car too, by the way, because your car's on my list. The old VF Commodore. Well, not if he sells his car, you won't. Wow. I don't know what he's on about. You have to send me what you're talking about. Um... And then I have something else I want to discuss with you. What's that? Do you use these at your work, like ratcheting screwdrivers, instead of like your conventional ones? Um, I think no. I mm, I don't personally. I I you know I have used some in the past, but I use just conventional screwdrivers because it's what I I um. Uh, it's what I bought in my in the first pack I ever bought for screwdrivers. I mean, they're cheap and everything, but yeah, I, I um, that. 
<laughs> that sucks. I um I love this thing. This this one <clears throat> in particular. Um it's a coarse grit screwdriver, what I like, but I just I um there's been a lot of times where like I've I've had a screwdriver and you get in like a really taut, tight little um space and you can't fucking get your hand to twist around effectively. So right. having a ratcheted screwdriver is like super super um Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, nice. like, if you if yeah. you got the if you got like a spare ten dollars, go down and and just go down to Bunnings or what or yeah. what have you, and and go pick one up because they're definitely worth it. Absolutely, Punky Wog, you never sent me anything. What are you on about <laughs> liar? I'm literally on, liar. I'm literally on Messenger Big now. You didn't liar. you didn't send me shit. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a Ford yeah. XB, just mint condition, 25k. That can't be right. 25k for an XB? That is weird. Normally they go like 60 and then up from there, even for like a shitty one's usually 60. But, um. We just spell it why it was indicating it to be a steal. It looks it genuine. Sense. Maybe looks, the person who's selling genuine. it didn't really know what they had. Yeah. So uh, unlikely. Unlikely. You don't buy those sorts of cars unless you um, you know what you're doing with them. Because you got to remember, like, getting parts for those old cars is really hard. Um, oh, okay. Well, maybe that's why you got rid of it. But yeah, there's, like, a guy at work's um, family member... Uh, his partner owns a um, car parts franchise. So yeah. they sell um, and move car parts for like exotic and normal cars as well. And um, apparently he took his Ferrari out the other week and fucking blew the tran transmission on it. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, that would fucking suck. Yeah, that would. Holy crap. Sorry, I'm just... Getting a little bit close, so I just needed to move. I was too close to the wall. Um, I also, um, if you get one of those screwdrivers, man, I highly recommend buying these little cheap kits from Bunnings too, eh? This thing's fucking... I got so many of these. Let's have a look. I fucking love them. It's, uh, it's a hundred piece. It's funny. This is cheaper at Bunnings. Oh, yeah, those ones. Yeah, I've seen those this ones. Is... I've been contemplating getting those ones. Get them, get them, I'm em, just man. always wary about craft, right? Oh, but it's only like screwdriver bits. It's not like um, like I wouldn't put these on a power tool. Uh, I would put these only on hand tools. Um, because yeah, you're right. right. Craft, craft is shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like it even has all the different security screws. Yeah. In it, which is what I like about it. Um, because the amount of times that I want to get into a piece of electronics and there's a fucking security oh, screw. Yeah. The, the, it's a security screw. I find it really funny as well. They have Apple screws. Screw <laughs> these these little fork ones, Apple use those. So it's really funny that they have them. Oh, wow. Um, Even Craft Ride is onto them. Yeah, everybody is. But I have um, that and, uh, and then I also use this thing a lot as well, which is basically, it's got a whole heap of, it's got all the exact same bits that's in that thing, but... This is an electronic screwdriver. It's cool because you can do 90 degree as well. This is a handy piece of tool, this. But, uh, yeah, I reckon every single person that loves do-it-yourself, get get yourself a good bit kit. You don't need an electric screwdriver. I got that because I was taking apart lots of different doors and shit like that. I was getting annoyed yeah. with my hand. Um... But yeah, uh, I highly recommend getting like uh, a, a, any screwdriver and just getting one of those bit kits and getting a ratcheting as well. Um, and you'll be able to do pretty much like 80% of your at-home stuff, including automotive stuff. So yeah, and uh, I also keep in my car a little um, tool kit 
it's like yay big and it has like a miniature socket set with ratchet and a few yeah, bits I and stuff yeah that. yeah that thing has saved me on the side of the road a couple of times so uh yeah. highly recommend keeping something like that in your car uh, if you um if you love working in your own car something goes wrong you could be as simple as like it's be as simple as like i don't know you you got a coolant leak or something like that and you duct taped it back up and the hose popped off or something like that and you're able to redo it up and then get cold water uh, get distilled water from a tap from a local server or something and then just to get you home essentially so, yeah and take care yeah. of it later yeah 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 definitely but uh yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun like researching all this scan still stuff and yeah learning how it all works yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was really scared like when I plugged it into my car, I was like, oh, this is going to fry my Ooh, CPU. It's gonna blow up. <laughs> uh, not my CPU, my ECE. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow something up. No, no, it was all good. So, yeah. Did you see that uh, Lethal Company's got a new drop? A new drop? Mm. Like a new piece of equipment? Is that what you mean by drop? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a new piece of equipment, but it's also like kind of you can sell it. Right. You remember the you know remember Ray was talking about the skinwalker? Yes. So there's a mask that if you put on it possesses you and then you will kill other players and possess them and then there'll be it just spreads. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy. So, I've seen those lobbies with the um the bigger bigger party mods and they have like yeah. eight people and only once ends up surviving and they're all wearing <laughs> a mask and like chasing this one person down. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Also, Punky Wog, you should totally play that lethal lethal company if you haven't already. Highly recommend it. It's so much fun. So yeah. I, um yeah, we always get into so much strife with each other when we play that game. Well, that's the fun part about it, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I liked it. Oh, sorry. And uh, me and Ray had a blast the other day when it was just me and me and her playing. Mm. So, yeah. but I swear, like, some of the deaths are just bullshit. I've, oh, yeah. I've had so many times where I've died and thinking that. Uh, ha! Why? My most frustrating. Uh, deaths were like where the monsters were literally spawning. Me and Ray were having issues, um, where they just kept spawning one after the other, and like we lost our um our drop. So the 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 thing came down to drop off our torches and shit, right? Yeah, and there was a freaking dog. Right there. Uh, and then another one spawned right next to it. And, like, we literally <laughs> watched it rise up the air. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then, like, there was this one bit where, like, Ray and I were, like, on the home run. And I'm running and running and running. I'm like, yeah, I got my loot, got my loot. And then next minute, a worm comes out and no one eats me. I'm like, damn. Yeah, the, the worm... The, the earthworm is the one I've had the most frustration with. Not that I've had it happen a lot of times, but just, like, I never... I didn't even know there was an earthworm in that game. And then all of a sudden I learned the hard yeah. way that it, in there fact, exists. A, well, at least you haven't come across the Nutcracker, because uh, me and Ray did, not he scared the shit out of us. Well, who's the Nutcracker? He's the Nutcracker. Is that the possessive fly one? No, no. The Nutcracker is the literal Nutcracker. Who oh. has a, Who has a shotgun. And he blows your fucking brains out. When you oh, see someone get funny. killed with him, your head like disappears and blood goes oh. everywhere. Yeah, it's oh. like it's full on. It's funny as. But yeah, like me and Ray were like looking around the corner and we're like, "What's that noise?" Because like he plays music, and then yeah. and then um, we turn. And I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" And then it turns around, and looks at us, and like your mouth opens and the eyes start glowing red. And then it starts playing trumpeting music and it starts running towards us. And, you're like, and I'm like, oh, oh, and I'm like freaking out. And then it comes to the doorway and just blows my brains out. <laughs> and then um, and then Ray died after as well. We, like chased her down and killed her. And apparently, this is a cool thing and game changing. So you can stun it and kill it 
and take its shotgun. Yeah. And it can kill pretty much all the monsters. So, <laughs> you know Mr. Creeper? Uh, yeah. The one that loves breaking your neck when you're not looking? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, can, you can kill him with it. <laughs> one shots him. So, next Hell time yeah. we play, I'm going to try so hard to kill one so we can take the shotgun and then... Turn the tables on these monsters, man. I'm sick and tired yeah, of Yeah, I know it. what you mean. It's been fucking nuts. And, like, the um spiders, because they, they nerfed the rail, um, the rail cheese? Cheese. What do you call it? Cheese? I don't know. What? The when, you, when you jump on the railing, you jump on the railing to, uh, uh, to, like, hide from the knee-biting monsters. Oh, the, uh, che- what? Yeah, cheese. It is cheese. I thought so. Um, yeah, so, like... This is news to me. So, they nerfed... So, you know how before you could jump on the railing and avoid getting killed by the spiders? And the... You know that thing with the big arms that can jump across yeah. cause rays and stuff? Yeah, so, um, that no longer works anymore. Oh, what? Yeah, I know. It pissed me off, too. So, the only way to fight these monsters is either run or attack them. Um, so yeah, but me and Ray have been playing a lot. You can't outrun long armed man, no, you can't, but you can outsmart him. Can you? Yeah, outsmart him. You zap gun him and then you hit him the crap out of the shovel. Yeah, but we don't have a zap gun. We don't, you gotta buy one, mate. You gotta stop dying. Uh, well, we can't. Uh, this is a bit of a this is a bit of a uh, catch twenty two. We would need a stun gun, but we can't die in order to buy a stun gun. Nah, we'll, it's not we'll, working. we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get it. We'll get it working. We'll figure it out. Mm. We'll figure it out. Every other person can do it because I want to get to the library. The library? Yeah, there's a library. Oh, yeah, it's one of the um, maps. It's also scary yeah, of because. Course. The entities, oh, I'm so tired. Sorry. Uh, the entities um can actually go outside, so they follow you outside. They can. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think they could. They can. We still haven't seen a coil head. A coil head. That's the no, one we haven't. Yeah, it's the one that um you don't look. You can't not look away. Don't blink. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play more of that this weekend. And, in fact, there's a few more um, updates out, aren't there? There's the Phasmo one and Outlast as well. It's got an update as well for Christmas. True, yeah. Those those have got, an out, up, those have got updates. Yeah. Um, that I'm excited for. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to be playing lots this weekend, I reckon. Definitely. Yeah, I reckon. Ascension Miner. Also, some sad news today. Oh, fuck. Oh, I was so sad to hear that. You know um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Yes. You know the captain? No. I don't. I only know... I The only thing I know about Blo- uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is that it's titled Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. The main um, captain of the, of, of the Nine-Nine, basically... Uh, the actor Andre, mm. he died today. Oh, it's actually, that, that actually sucks. Yeah, he was a really, really nice person, I think. I don't know. I assume. He seemed nice. <laughs> I have yeah, no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But he died, yeah. He died of 61, which which is sad. Hmm. So, um, so he won't be in any more future. Fuck me, man. I am so tired. I, yeah. He won't be any more future episodes. I'm going to try and go to the gym like, tomorrow. I suppose that makes sense. Obviously, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you still haven't seen Godzilla Minus One yet, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't had... I, don't, I just don't have the fucking time to go see it. You need to make time. What did I tell I, you? <laughs> got to make time. I got, I got to find some time first, and I can't, I'm having trouble with that. What are you doing this weekend? I... I'm, Probably finishing off Christmas shopping and getting all that sorted. Yeah, that's when is Christmas? 
like two weeks. Not even that. It's even, literally in twelve it's, days. It's literally next weekend. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow, that's fucking crazy. This that, year has gone a little. That has gone, gone really, so really quickly. so fucking I'm a little, quick. Yeah. I'm a little scared. Wow. Because I am. I gotta I'm, admit, I'm a little bit scared. I'm really excited uh, for my thirtieth. I'm going camping. Hell yeah! It really did, right? Well, I am so excited. This is also one of the main motivating factors of me um, wanting to get this canopy because. So my tonneau got stolen. Um, how long did I have it for, Ray? Do you remember? It wasn't even that long. I reckon I had it for a couple of months and then some prick stole it. It's basically the tonneau is like a, it's a black leathery polyester cover. A year. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It was probably a year, but it got stolen. And, um, and it was my fault because I, it comes with actually a lock um sort of kit that you can attach to it so the tonneau itself has like a, a padlock shackle on it and then you can mount yeah. a shackle to your the bed of your uh ute and then you can padlock it so then that way if someone was to undo it they'll be like oh shit there's a padlock here but i didn't do it because i'm like who the fuck's gonna steal a tonneau someone stole a tonneau it was mine well now, and, now you um, know now, now you know and I haven't gotten a new one because they are expensive. It costs me two hundred over two hundred dollars to buy that one, and it comes Whoa. with a full kit, right? They're up to three four hundred dollars now, so they've Yikes. doubled in price to what they were when I bought one. And you still have to buy the full kit, so you can't just buy the cover itself. You have to buy all the mounting shit and all that sort of stuff with it, which is why it's so expensive. <sighs> And it's like, Dude, that all I want is the cover. So I haven't bought one because I'm like, well, I want a canopy at the end of the day. And I was tossing up between a tray and a toolbox canopy or yeah. a fiberglass canopy. And I end up going with the fiberglass canopy because one, I can take it off and on a lot easier than obviously a toolbox canopy. Um, and two, it's lighter and I'm not over the full touring thing. I was, when I first bought the full drive, I was all hyped up about it. Now I just want something that is going to keep water out. Um, so my stuff stays dry. It's still going to be dusty and shit, but that's okay. I can deal with dust. Um, I'll just blow it out. It's not that end of the world. Um, but yeah, so that's why I've gone for the canopy. Um, and then eventually I will get a second battery in there and I'll be able to have a fridge and all that sort of stuff. But slow process. I'm not I'm not in a rush or anything like that. So not I just want enough. something to store my stuff in and not have to fucking <laughs> yeah. tarp and this and that. And yeah. And with the canopy, I get more space too because I got height. So um, where before I was limited with height because it's all exposed and I have a tarp and I have to tie it down and. Now it's not a big deal because it's like if it flops around in the back, it's in a canopy. It's not going to go anywhere, you know. Yeah. So. So yeah, so I'm quite quite excited. I hope it all goes well tomorrow. And the hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Fucking one of those things. The guys put it on hold for me. Um, oh really? That's nice. Well, is that a is is that a records? Yeah, I thought it was nice, but um, you know, <laughs> I'm. I feel sorry for my dad. I love him for doing this, but he's driving an hour. Oh, yikes. <laughs> so I hope that, like, he doesn't get there and, like, um, they've sold it from underneath us or... Oh, um, that, would, that, would be, that would be just rude. That would be... Or, um, or like, he gets there and it's, like, completely different to what the pictures are. Because <laughs> I, I got yeah, him before... That'd be a lot of effort to go to. It is. To screw someone over like that. Um, cause before, like I said, yes, I got him to take photos of inside, outside. I said, can you please take a photo of all the crossbars or the, cause I wanted to get a, as much as a picture of what this looked like in the condition it was in before I say yes. And, uh, he was actually really, uh, forthcoming about it. So he kept calling me it his brother. Pretty genuine. It sounds like it's going to do too much effort to be lying to you. Know? Yeah. Well, the fact that he pretty much put it on hold straight away as well which was nice 
Uh, mm. So yeah. So my dad's gonna get the trailer because he can't put it in the back of his ute because um, he's got too much shit in there, and he's just gonna <laughs> yeah. drive all the way up there and hours out and pick it up, get in the cash, and come home. And then this weekend, I'll probably end up mounting it, so which would be really great. I'll probably end up doing it in the rain too, so that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. That's the best way to do it. Hey, at least I don't need to wash it. It's getting washed while I'm putting it in. So, you know. Yeah, true. It's only five of us. With. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing is I need to change the locks on it um, because it, they don't have keys because it's a wreckers. So obviously they got it from yeah, the insurance sure. company. So. <laughs> so I have to get my own um, locks, which is easy to change the, the barrels out, place them with new ones, key like them, done. Yeah. So it's going to be spectacular. No, I'm excited for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the fact it's got roof racks. Yeah. I'm curious. What are you going to use roof racks for? What do you, what do you plan? Um, what do you want to use? Roof so racks I would for? like to have an awning uh, on it. Yeah. And the reason why I'd like to have an awning is uh, for when Ray and I decide to go on our picnic adventures that we do once in blue moon yeah. um it would be nice to pull up somewhere and just pull the awning out and have some shade and have like the picnic next to the car like yeah. fold out seats and things like that or like on campsites just have extra bit of shade because like when we go camping it's very arid dry climate it means yeah it's next to the river but still dry and hot so yeah. um, it's always good to have as much shade as possible. So I'd like to have an awning, but um, I do not want a king's awning because they are shit. <laughs> What's I'll, bad about them? They're just built cheap crap. Um, uh, okay. They bend, they break, they don't last long. The um, <laughs> the type of awning that I like is a wanderer. Uh, they you can get. Um, you can get a uh, different type of awning. So these are your, these are your freestanding um, Darchi awnings. They're ridiculously expensive. So expensive for what they are, ah. honestly. You can get like these 270 awnings, which basically do a full wraparound. They're actually really good, but mm. um, I prefer the freestanding ones like that. But you can get Wanderer or do one that's cheaper. Well, at least they used to. But even one like that, I'd be happy with just to pull out. Um, but yeah, you can get ones in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. But yeah, like something like that would be fine, but obviously not so expensive. I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on an awning. But uh, yeah, something simple like that would be, would be fine. And that's what I would use. The roof racks with and plus also i do carry long stuff as well every now and then so i'll just tie it to the roof like for example when i go camping and that i can put the um i can put like the swag on the roof and things like that yeah, it's going to be a big fucking windbreak but um you know it's it's gives me extra um space essentially yeah which is which is needed so um yeah and I'd also like to mount my aerial, my car's aerial, on the roof as well. Um, have like a fold down aerial, because by doing that, you increase the range of your aerial. So um, there was a test done with uh, Ronnie Dow. So you're familiar with like the different gains in aerials, like the six dB, the three dB, the two b dB, and the shape and how they work. Yep. So if you put a 3 dB area, which is what I've got on my car, and you put that on the roof, it actually has more range than a 6 dB area, which is the big long whip one. Yeah. Um, because you're moving it higher. And the 3 dB has a bubble, which is why they're really good in hilly climates. So it basically the radio field is a bubble around your your vehicle. So if you put it on the roof, you got about you got about a six-kilometer bubble, roughly. Nice. 
um, verse on the ground on the bull bar, which is only like a one or two kilometers, like line of sight essentially, um, where the 6 dB is like a thin sort of frequency range where it's like it's basically line of sight as well, but it goes further distance. So it's instead of like a bubble, it's like this narrow field like that from the tip of the antenna. Yeah, and hi- it shoots- uh, hypercardioid. Yeah, basically, yeah. Exactly. And um, so it's really good for like flat flat surfaces and long distances. Mm. But it can't go over hills or hilly environments where the 3 dB can. So if you put the 3 dB on the roof, you beat the 6 dB on range now and versatility because you can now send signals over hills. So it's it's much better to have a 3 dB antenna on the roof of your car than it is um, to have a 6 dB on the front of your bull bar. No, that makes sense because because by the sounds of it, the hyper the hypercardioid um, is uh yeah very obviously very directional but the yeah. the bubble one which i'm from one of my my experience is it's a cardioid but just not quite as directional so you'll probably be able to pick up the frequencies bouncing off the atmosphere yeah which they can utilize um that's what i know about radio antennas most predominantly um Mm. I'm trying to show so the you... picture. I'm trying to show the um the picture of uh what I'm trying to here we go. Here's, here's a great example um of how it works. Okay, so that is basically what I'm what I'm getting at. So the three dB is the bubble, it goes everything in that field can be received by the other antenna by the the other yeah. person with a 6 db you see it's a big narrow and it shoots yeah. out forward and back so, so it it sacrifice it, it it's it sacrifices uh uh do, 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 pick up freak pull up, it sacrifices polarity for range basically yeah um yeah, that's pretty much the way it works. And then you even get the big long antennas, which is 9 dB, which goes even further and narrows the field even more. <laughs> yeah. um, but oh, essentially what we've what people have worked out is if you just move the orientation of that antenna up here, this 3 dB bubble actually gets bigger. It actually goes a lot more huh. um, than, than this depiction. So... Because if you move the 6 dB field up here on the roof, you actually narrow your field and it will miss the antennas of most cars. So, mm. But the 3 dB, it doesn't. So if you um, put that on the roof, you actually extend the range. So, yeah, it's interesting. He's people have done multiple tests of doing that and they all found the 3 dB on the roof of the car is the best position uh, for long distance and just in general. So, yeah. Some little fun science facts for you. Mm. Have you ever have you ever looked at the a picture of the electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum? No. No, it's actually really cool. Um uh, so they say that the discovery of electricity was the most important thing to, uh, for uh, humanity. I would uh, disagree. I would say that the discovery of the electromagnetic spectrum is the most uh, most important discovery in human history. So why is that? Like that? Because virtually everything we do nowadays, um, uh, it, it, it's. Every every invention in terms of telecommunication uses yeah. utilizes the phenomenon phenomena that is the electromagnetic spectrum to functionally work. Say, say, say uh, radios, for example. 
Yeah. They have a carrier frequency and it's content frequency. So that's all based off of radio waves. Um, uh, the way that that um, that optical fiber cables work, the way that um, that uh, Ethernet cables work, the way that BNC uh, British Naval Connection cables work. Um, yeah. They all utilize the electromagnetic spectrum to work essentially. Okay. And say, for example, just like radio, you have a carrier frequency and all of its content frequency with your cat cable. Yeah. Um, it's sending down uh, your Ethernet cable, it's, ca- it's sending down particular frequencies or multiple frequencies, depending on what its bandwidth is, down its line, and yeah. then it then gets decoded by whatever machine you're using, such as just your your home computer, yeah. and that gets interpreted, and then voila, you have the internet. So yeah, I guess that's that's true. It's also interesting the gamma rays and all that sort of stuff. Invisible light's really smack dab in the middle of it all. Kind of, yeah. That's some fascinating stuff, man. Mm, and um, your audible, the your uh, audible spectrum. Yeah. Is just below radio waves. Okay. This is all all the same stuff. Yeah. Um. Then you have your microwaves for for uh, microwaves. I think microwaves are in ultra high frequency radios. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure about infrared. I think no infrared. I'm pretty sure is. Um. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's optical K optical fiber is infrared or infrared. your uh, your t- uh, television remotes use infrared yeah to send to communicate um and then visible light is just visible light and then ultraviolet X ray gamma ray don't touch those they're <laughs> they're they're not very nice they're gonna kill you yeah um. Yeah, radio waves. They're pretty cool. And then below that is even better. Yeah. So 10 to the power of 4. 10 to the power of 4, that's 10. 1 times 10 is 10 to the power of 4. I think that's 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 hertz. So, which is why when you... Why you... Ha- when you have interference from radio waves interfering with audio equipment... Yeah. Um, that can actually you can hear it because you can hear certain radio frequencies. Yeah. Um. And I love science. I think science is pretty cool. Yeah, science and is really cool. I think I like it's science. using a fucking Kelvin, the temperature of Kel- of objects, which the radiation is the most intense wavelength. Huh. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, I see. Yeah, so do you want to know what happens if the universe cooled down to zero Kelvin? The universe? Yeah. Doesn't most of the space at zero? No. Is zero Kelvin sub zero? I think it is. No. Well, yes. Yeah. It's ultimate Way zero. Way sub zero. Ultimate zero or. What's the word for the fucking... Ult- what's the word the for... The ultimate zero. Is that what, what it is, the right? ultimate zero? Yeah, it's like the coldest thing possible. Mm, the kind of. Yeah. So at zero Kelvin, atoms stop vibrating and the universe ceases to exist. Would it actually cease to exist, though? In theoretical physics, Yes. I don't think it would. I don't think it would just like vanish and nothing would be there. I think it would just be motionless, like frozen no, objects. No, it are. would cease to exist. You reckon? The thing is that you can't make it not exist. It's kind of like going beyond the speed of light. In terms of theoretical physics, it's impossible. I don't know. I think they're wrong. Well, I mean, you do the math on it. Well, it, I don't think it's about math. I think it's about practicality. Like, 
the, like, if an atom doesn't <laughs> vibrate, that doesn't make it disappear. It's not. It's not convenient <laughs> for atoms to stop vibr- vibrating. Therefore, it's a false. Like it doesn't make sense how like something could. Just well, it's stop not supposed to make sense. Disappear. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. You just have to do the maths. If you f- absolutely froze everything still, like it say for example, fr- it's not necessarily freeze. It would everything would be frozen before it even got to zero. Our conventional understanding of what frozen yeah. is would oh, be like, w- we would everything be would dead. be frozen we well would be before. Dead. In terms of oh, like in, in terms of like um we would not be conscious, we would know what happens. That we is wouldn't know what exists. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, we would know. It would end in terms of us, but in terms of the physicality of like the meteorites floating around space and whatnot that they would just suddenly not be there anymore. That they would just suddenly not be there. Yeah, exactly. Because a hundred thousand Kelvin, they a hundred Kelvin is negative one hundred and seventy three degrees Celsius. Yeah, but it wouldn't disintegrate the atoms. Is what I'm getting at. Atoms won't break apart. It won't disintegrate because you, that that that, yeah. that requires. Because it's still going to have particles and upon stuff them. like that as well. No, the particles would just stop vibrating and they just would cease to exist. But they're still there. There's... No. How? How? Where do they go? They can't just disappear. It's not they how just it exactly. You can't reach zero Kelvin. It's impossible to reach zero, yeah. zero Kelvin. The thing is that, uh, the thing is that if you were to reach zero Kelvin, everything would just stop to stop existing. I would think it would just stop working. <laughs> What the fuck does that even mean? Stop existing. Okay, so before you were born, you didn't exist. That is stop existing. So to me, it's like you never were there. Past, yeah, present, exactly. or future. That's not existing. Yeah. Well, if you were an item and then all of a sudden something froze you so you, deeply you, you that would just go, you're Adam. And you just yeah, would stop existing. I, don't think that would actually happen. I think they're incredibly the wrong. I think they I think they're going a little bit too sci-fi on that shit. That's it's literally science. It's not science, so this all the all it's the not theories. It's science because you disagree. Science well, it's science as sub fundamentals of science, isn't it? I <laughs> can't see how you can prove that and have because it's all theoretical. And by theoretical, I mean, like, they don't know 100% true if that is true or not, if that happens the way they think. That it's only an idea that they have maths to fucking back it up. But at the end of the day, like, they could be wrong completely. The they Kelvin, have, I mean, they could be yeah. wrong, but the thing is that the Kelvin is is basically how cold or how hot it yeah. is, dep- it, depending on whether I'm you not ask arguing, an or not. I, I'm not arguing the, uh, the cold. What I'm arguing is that there's a particle there, you just froze it because it's that fucking cold. Now suddenly mm. it just doesn't exist anymore. That I don't believe. I think it would just be sitting there completely motionless, not moving. I think that's actually what would happen. I'm pretty sure that's at zero degrees Celsius. No, because the atoms still move in zero degrees Celsius isn't cold. It's very cold. I don't like it's not it. Even, it's not even, well, it's cold for us. But yeah, it's not, that, like it's it. not it's that cold, cold at all. You get like cold. minus 30 in like Antarctica. Yeah. Anyway, it's the end of the show. That's the end of, the, that's, that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed our uh-huh. little chat about magical ipads yeah it was uh a lot of fun we're gonna raid into some random that i have no idea who yes hell this yes. person is but we're gonna raid into the random we're gonna raid into a random raid. um i hope you all have a good night and day depending where you are on the world um and we'll see you next time and the next show hopefully we will have guests maybe this sunday we'll try and organize something anyway but hell uh, yeah we'll catch you next time all right see ya see ya